Hello. Oh, shoot. Um, my headphones are not connecting. Or my phone stole them. Yes. Hello. Hello. I can hear you now. Great. Okay. Um. Uh. Oh yeah, I was working on um, some other stuff. Anyway, let's go. I'm making my own shell. Uh, so that's fun. Uh... Mm hmm Interesting. Cool. And let's go to notes. Um... Uh, looks like we're in the middle of making callable work. I remember last time something about we were trying to determine exactly what frame we go from up to down, and we started doing prior versus current frame, whether or not the button is up or down. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see what I have. Continue here next time. We are about to write the logic on click only once per click. Review the logic for determining whether the button was just clicked. Going left, up, down. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, what are your thoughts on that right now? Um, yeah. That is what we are doing. <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. So where was? I guess let's just go look at. We can go look at prior versus pressed. So we start off. They're both false. Uh, that's what we have in in it. Is that what you have in in it also? Pretty sure I copied. I just did whatever you had. Oh yeah, I have this one here. Okay. Um, and then oh, let's see. How does prior get used? Here, when we update pressed, we figure out if the button is being pressed and if it is, we're going to set pressed to true. And just before doing that, we're going to save whatever pressed was. Save whatever pressed was into prior pressed. That all seems good. And then we have this else here, which will set pressed to false, which means we need to save whatever it was into prior pressed. This... Uh, seems like it's either correct or close to correct um, and so then after doing update pressed we can then use pressed and prior pressed I think they will mm -hmm. be correctly updated um, so let's go do we use them yet? Ah. Uh no, but we're like close to. Uh, do you have in process? Do you have? So we update pressed. We call that function that I was just looking at, and then maybe we'll do something in this area with them. Are do you have process? Yeah, you do. Okay. Oh, I have it. Wait, where did it go? Your mouse is. Or your cursor was on it. Are, is that uh, make sure that you're in process of button oh I actually deleted it but yeah it's right here 
Why did you delete it? Don't do that. Well, I commented it out, so it I thought. Right. Um. Oh, I think I remember talking about like the stuff that was in process. We could break it into several functions, um, like this stuff. But I, I well, wouldn't yeah, delete yeah. process. I would call. Oh no, I didn't delete process. No, I meant delete this because you were highlighting on that that you were talking about that. Oh, I see. I see. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um. um yeah. So. Uh. So now, let's just take for granted that prior pressed and pressed are true and false uh, correctly. So on the exact, we want to be able to detect the exact frame where the button is, goes from up to down. How do we do that? Um, yeah. Also... Yeah, so think about that, and I I can still hear you because I'm gonna have my headphones in, but uh, I'm gonna go get my water bottle. Okay, um, sounds good. Yeah. So go ahead and talk through uh, out loud what your thoughts are on what to do, or you could just write the code. Maybe. Right. Uh. I guess, yeah, for a click, you would see if self.press is true while self.prior uh, pressed is false to see if it's a continuous hold or if it's a recent uh, touch. Sounds good to me. Uh, um, let me see, where's your... Okay, so you're putting this into a function called click uh, if self.pressed is true and uh you need to say a n d i think in python no. self dot prior pressed is false then print click okay print click that sounds good uh that's a very minimal test just to see if that's the correct logic um let's try that out i believe i don't have a shell open for this yeah it looks like i do not cd dot should oh no cd cd dash there we go it activated cool um And then, oh no, what? Not sure what's going on there. Um, oh. Test robot. Oh no, that's the wrong one. I want ball drop. Uh oh. Uh, uh, if callable, self dot on click. Oh, right. I still have some stray code. <laughs> let me let me go comment that out. Okay, so that is commented out. I'm pretty sure the indentation on comments doesn't matter in Python. Okay, cool. Um, so we'll bring this up. Oh, look at that. I look sparkly. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, click. Uh, uh, it's not working. Is it working for you? Uh, well, did you call it? I don't think we called it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Good idea. Where would you um, call it? That well, was... I'm also 
a test and you passed. Great. <laughs> Good job. Uh -oh. uh, but also, I'm facing another problem because I think at the very end of last time, yeah, when you said to like spread diff process into different things, I did yeah. for the at least the colors. So I said diff button color. Okay. And I I fixed that kind of, but it's still not liking it at all. Bummer. Um. So what is the let's see. What is what does the stack trace say at the um is the start of the problem? Mouse on screen on button is not defined when um, it's right here. Mouse on screen. So I have that as a method and you also have it as a method. Huh. And then I do call oh, it. Um look uh yeah, so look at the code that I have here on line 55. Oh, self. Oh, I, that's what I kept yeah. forgetting. Okay. I, I uh, do the same thing. It's annoying to have to remember to do that. But, yep. Um. Okay, so now oh, it's starting for you. Color is not defined. Is not defined. That's probably... Oh. That might be another like self dot thing. Um, okay, so the color, the color is defined right. in the self dot button color. So it's like right here. I have colors, not color. Oh, I define a color here. Uh, so I define it here and then use it here. So maybe you moved this into a separate function. And then it's complaining about this this use so of that, color here. Yeah. So would that be a software color? No. Or does this need to be a global? Where so I if, if I move this into a separate function, then I no longer have a definition for color here. Yeah. So because I would this is where that. color was defined. So you'd have to like global? move this to the same place as this stuff. Oh. Or yeah. pass it in as a parameter or no pass return it as the return value of where the function that, that this was moved into um which seems like uh a good direction to go down that would be we could have one function that determines what state we are in and then another function that says okay given what state we are in what color should we have um, that seems like a good separation of stuff. Okay, so it's running now. I just moved or the self yeah. Oh, okay. okay, so <laughs> lit is not working, but okay. Yeah, I would maybe just move it back inside for now and put a note that says, I intend to move this to a separate function. Move... Uh, so a to-do, move this into a separate function called, what did you call it? Button color. Button color. Uh, yeah. So like, just that. Uh, and then we can we can deal with like whatever oh, the whatever the details I think are. That's supposed to be split. Yeah, because I think I split the thing over the. Or I don't know. I think the order does matter though. Okay. Okay. Never mind. Um, I have, yeah, so if you blit it and then put the text on it, then the text won't be on the blitted version until after the blitting happens. And the blitting <laughs> is a, uh, oh shoot, what's that called? Anyway, it does matter when you do it, yes. So does it work now? Yes. Hey. 
And if you click on it. Nope. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> where do you call? So you have self dot click after update pressed and button color. Um, I'm gonna call this section of code button color, and then we'll have self dot click. Um, and self dot click says this stuff. I wonder if it'll work for me. I'm not seeing a reason that it wouldn't work, but I see that it doesn't on your computer. Oh, um, okay. Check out my screen. Look, and when I press it and let go, press, let go, press, yeah. Interesting. let go. So I maybe subconsciously did something slightly different than what you have. Yeah, let's, let's see if we can let's figure let's that out. <laughs> um, so click uh, looks like this for me. What does it look like for you? Okay, so that's identical. Is it identical? Yeah, I think so. Okay, that's weird. Um, and then process has update pressed. I guess we should go look at update pressed. Uh, line 83, you want P A S S. Cool. Um, so update pressed. And then button color is this area of code and then self dot click well wait how do you oh uh, do you define mouse on button later uh this, this mouse, is mouse, on... mouse on screen on button yeah i is... i didn't move that stuff into a separate function yet um so to do move into separate function named mouse on screen on button so my definition of mouse on button is so is this here which or not is, is used this. here so mouse on screen oh it looks like i also have separately a function with that name which is here so uh it looks like i'm like partially into moving it into a separate function emma um, i'm going to turn my code into what you have because i think it's one a little cleaner but also we don't know what's going on right now so yeah Good stuff. I wonder why... Why am I so... While you do that, I'm going to look into why I'm sparkly. I think it's my chroma key. Let's see. Default values. Oh! That looks a lot better. Alright. I think I was messing with the... Uh, slider values because my lighting was uh i had dimmed my lighting and i forgot about that so oh. I think, um i think uh i think i dimmed my lighting then i tried to play with the chroma key settings to fix me and then now my lighting is back to normal but the chroma key settings were not useful for that amount of light <laughs> um name mouse on window is not defined uh i define mouse on window right here i wrote widow window when 
window without a W. Oh. <laughs> Win window. <laughs> Windu. Okay. Alrighty. Does it work? Oh, whoa. That's weird how that changes everything. Cool. I wonder uh, what color that. Good question. Uh, I don't... Well, maybe if we look at the diff, we'll be able to tell. But... Uh, I'm not sure. You could try open up a shell and then do git diff and see if the diff captured whatever is important in the changes that just happened just now. Um, but I think it's been a while since we've made a commit, so I think it's probably not going to be useful in determining that. You could also try doing uh, control Z to or command Z to see what just changed. Yeah. But that is uh that's a good question. That's a good learning uh, yeah, I not thing. It. No, not useful. Okay. I can just do a uh command Z command Z, but I will uh copy this first. Into a separate text file or something. Well, I just, eh. I can live in there. <laughs> I don't think that'll work. I think that uh, removes all the new lines. Eh. But okay. Oh wait, no. I had okay. Wait. Yeah. I had every. Uh, uh. <laughs> okay. You could paste it on line sixty. And okay, then so or... this is the new. This is the old. Okay. This is not supposed to be here. So I guess I, I didn't define my mouse in this one. I guess. So why didn't we use mouse on screen on button? That shouldn't make a difference to the meaning. So if you here, I just defined mouse as pygame.mouse. And then if I everywhere that I have the word mouse, if I instead had pygame.mouse, this should function exactly, excuse me, exactly the same. Um, so I don't think that's what caused it to behave differently. Let's see if we can figure out what else is different. Get pause. So here I do get pause and I save that into mouse position. And then mouse on window is get focused. Which I have right here. <laughs> and then we have uh, self.rec.collide point mouse position. Uh, self.rec.collide point mouse position. So that looks like it should behave the same. So possibly the difference is uh, a change that happened elsewhere. I don't think the behavior of the code that you have and I have is different for this. The new version that you have and the old version I don't think are different in behavior. You could test it out, yeah. Oh, wait, the, what did we do before we fix that? You could do more command Z to find out. Command the Z. Uh, I don't know if I will, okay. Let me take a screenshot then of this. Yeah, it's hard to tell how how far back to go. <laughs> um, yeah, it's gonna undo some of that other stuff that you were just doing.
didn't do anything. Okay, wait. I got rid of this, actually. I got rid of this death hold and turned it into a pass. I don't think but... that would change anything. We changed uh, some of this other stuff down here. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, see, okay, it doesn't work now. Okay, it doesn't work now. Like, what do you mean? if you click it, 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 it acts as a hold. Oh, wait, do you call hold? Yes. Yeah. So maybe inside of hold, rather than printing the word click, you should print the word hold. Oh, that's pretty true. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a that's a good point. Because you can't tell which click is which. Oh, it was working all along. <laughs> okay, that's a little. I'm, and that's exactly the behavior that we want. One click and then a bunch of holds in a row. Yes. Ha! That's funny. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, okay. I, I still think your way is, even though it's more lines, it looks a little better than this. Cool. So I might, I'll just... Uh, bring back. it back by pulling up a screenshot sounds good which function are you doing oh mass on screen on button this one Good. All right, cool. Does it still work? <laughs> oh. oh, I suppose collide point wrong. Does it take like five seconds for the window to show up after you hit go? Yes, I don't know why. It started happening like a few sessions ago. That's weird. Um, it used to be pretty instant. Now it takes forever. Yeah. I just noticed that your volume is like way higher than mine. I think I might have spilled some juice like when I first got this computer. So I think my mic is pretty. Um, um muted. It, it might be that uh it's uh something i normally look at at the beginning of the session and try to like make your and my volume be this roughly the same this video is going to be a little hard to watch until around now in the video mm. i also i used to try to record b the audios in separate channels so i'd be able to fix things like that um but I never, I couldn't quite figure that out. Uh, 
Anyway, does it work? Now? Uh, yes, it does. Maybe. Cool. Um. So now we can do an action on purpose right when the clicking happens. Uh, maybe in addition to printing click, we should do whatever was uh, put here when the button was made. So we should, uh, this is where that if callable stuff comes in. If it is callable, then we want to. Oh, wait. Uh, click. Our then lambda we want to call it here. What's up? Our lambda is not working. Because if everything is working, then shouldn't this be printing as well? No, we, we don't actually call it here. Here we just call print click. We don't call the on click method. Oh. So the on click, on click, this, uh, whatever we sent in here got saved into the variable on click, but then I don't think we have a call to that. Oh, so then um, I so don't. Mine is okay. here or would be here, but it got uh, we commented it out while we did some troubleshooting. Yeah. yeah. So we need to in the place where we print click, we need to check whether on click is. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I forgot what it was. If callable. If. Like, yeah. Uh, self dot on click oh if callable oh uh, yeah that's what you oh i, I thought it was you literally thing. said this out loud so i typed it out as you were saying oh. it. <laughs> um uh, if callable no. self dot on click then what uh so uh, yeah self dot on click yeah and now it should none cannot be called uh, except I am guarding it in a check to see whether it's callable. I wonder if there is a way to tell to define in the code that on click Hmm. I suppose we could have a function that doesn't do anything. Rather than none, we could have a function that does nothing. Um, which I'm not quite sure how to write that. It might just be lambda colon. It looks like it expects an, an expression. What if I do lambda colon pass? Does that work? Expect expression. Mm. I don't think there... There might not be a way of doing nothing. Uh, we, could do, we could do something that has no side effects. Lambda colon uh, zero. Yeah, it looks like that's it's okay with that. <laughs> that's funny. Um, that is good. Lambda. Okay. And now it doesn't complain. Callable. Yeah, now this doesn't complain. Um, it probably would have run anyway, but... Um, Mine, mine ran, so... Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, so... Oh, what am I doing? Wrong. Uh, let's do that, and then let's press. It says click, and it says button clicked. Cool. Um, let's go back here. 
So click comes from here, and then the self dot on click had the button clicked. Oop. Uh, button clicked there. Okay, cool. Uh, so now we should be able to do other stuff if we want. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, one thing, though, is I know this is, like, what is exactly coded to happen, mm -hmm. um, but I feel like if you... Like, a normal person is not going to click, like, like that, like, super, super fast, or only one frame is registered, but rather, like, if they do a click, it would be like this, right? And then you can see how button click, and then, like, five, five six holds after it. Yeah. That's exactly, I know that's exactly how we coded it, but I don't know how, like, realistic that is, if that makes sense. Because if you're if you're the user and you're pressing, mm -hmm. you're not gonna get a perfect only one frame of a self flow. Yeah. Really. So, uh, so we now have the ability to when the user clicks, we can treat it as like a light switch where it just goes and does something once, or like a like a dimmer button where you press and hold and it continues to do something. So the dimmer dims and it continues to dim as long as you hold it. And a light switch just goes from one state to another. So we can, we can now make that happen. Uh, so for example, we can make it so that when you click the button, Maybe each time you press it, it's like hitting the ball. Um, or we could make it so that when you press it, as long as you hold it, it's like uh, blowing the ball. Like like a fan continuously adding more and more speed to the ball or something. Mm-hmm. So. But I, would, oh, I guess my real question is like, how do we differentiate? those two like how do you well so here this this on click would be the hitting the ball oh i just realized so because i of that change that i made above well i'll come back to that um so your question is how do we code the difference between those the the dimmer and the light switch this would be the light switch and then this would be the dimmer so this Something. code happens over and over again as long as the button is held and this code happens just once as when the button as like right when the button is is clicked mm -hmm. um, i'm realizing that i don't need to check whether it's callable anymore because it's always callable for me. Um, here, I change it into a lambda that doesn't do anything. And then the when the button is made, it could be turned into a lambda that does something. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, so if you click, it'll, also, it'll be one, like, the code would process it as one click and then like seven holds if it's just a regular person's like click without trying to get only one frame. So what did that mean? We're running the the light switch and the dimmer at the same time, even though we only want a light switch for that particular like instance. Um if yeah, so when we create the button, we can send in Oh, that's weird. Why is it complaining about this? Um we can send in a an action to do for just the click. 
Um, or we could send in an action for the click and the hold. Or we could send in a, an action for the click, for the hold and not the click. We can do all of those combinations. Um, well, it's a little bit difficult to do the hold without doing the click. And, uh, uh, print hello or something. Or no, hold. Um, why is it complaining? Argument of type blah cannot be assigned to a parameter on hold of type something. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so here, um, if, if we want to do the light switch thing, um, then we can do light switch so this is this is what will happen exactly when the click happens and then if we want to do the on hold thing we can fill this in with a lambda that does nothing and then oh I see what the issue is um, fill the, no, no, I guess I don't, um, fill this one in with something that does a hold, like whatever action we want to have happen on hold. So yeah. it will always, you're right, the button will always run this code and this code. We can just make it so that this code is a do nothing code. And this code is a hold code, or the other way around. My throat, my <clears throat> Stop drinking water. Oh yeah. I guess. Did that work? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, cool. Oh, okay. I'm thinking, I guess, yeah. like, in all real-life applications, like, you know, like, how sometimes when you, like, do a click, click, and then if you hold, like, some times when you click, like, on an app, yeah. and you click, click, and then, like, you hold, and then it does something different when it's wait, held. held, but then, like, how does it not do the hold when you do the two clicks before that, like that in my example. It, um, if you take a video of your computer and like you can see your hand clicking and you have like the computer screen in the background, you'll see that it doesn't, like whatever click action it's supposed to do, it doesn't actually do it as soon as you hit click. It actually waits for a little bit to see if there's another click after that. Does that okay. answer your question? Okay. I think that's I think you're getting at like how does it know that I'm gonna do that I'm going to do a double click if I've technically I've already clicked, how did it not do the initial click? And then how does it like retroactively change to a double click in the future when I do the second click. Yeah, some yeah, that was So, yeah, the way that it does that is by not actually performing the click action immediately. It, it waits a little bit. <clears throat> and there's um if you do a double click slowly enough, it does register as two single clicks. Um and there's a setting for that. Uh, at least on my computer, I don't know about on Mac, there's probably a setting for it on Mac, how long the gap can be between two clicks 
before it's considered a two separate clicks versus a double click, like where the cutoff is. Um, so like something like where I go double click to highlight. Yeah, that is um, actually that one might be fine to do a single click and then turn it into a double click when you do the second click. Yeah, because you want the mouse to go there regardless. I just saw that. Because... Yeah. I'm trying to think of some other example. Um, yeah, I guess another approach is just to make it so that the single click action is always could be followed by the double click action. I thought there was some thing where it just, it like just waits until some timeout has happened before deciding to whether it was a single click or a double click. But I guess not. On keyboards, you can do that um, with special firmware. Like I have uh, my keyboard is like a weird keyboard um, and I can switch between different layers um, and depending on how quickly I tap the buttons, it becomes a different, it does different actions. Um, and part of the way that it does that is by waiting until some timeout has happened before doing the single click version of the thing. So I thought that's how the mouse button worked as well. But now I'm thinking maybe they've just been clever about what does a single click do and what does a double click do, and they've just always made it so that a double click can follow a single click. That's mm -hmm. a cool solution too, I guess. Anyway, um, so I'm Cause... now realizing that we need to somehow communicate to the ball when a click or a double click has happened on a mouse button and I'm not quite sure how to do that best um, so it's easy enough to uh, on click it's easy enough to call on click here um, but I don't I don't know how best I can think of ways to do this but I don't know like what is what's gonna end up being uh, annoying to deal with later um, how do we make it so that when we do this here the ball class class ball knows that it needs to increase self dot X uh, or self dot velocity dot x, you know, like how do we, how do we make it so that this code up here affects this code this down here? Mm -hmm. How do we do that? I don't know. Well, I can think of some ways, but I'm not sure what the best way is. Oh wait, before we do that though, we should make a commit. Yes, it should. has been a while, and we did just make something definable, committable happen. And I will do... I haven't been doing this, but I will do my version of a commit. Um, oh. Uh, also, I don't have hold, and you do. So maybe I'll yeah. copy yours 
I also I need a hover. Pressed but I don't think I need to hover true. anymore. And self dot prior pressed. Um, yeah, equals true. Uh, self dot on hold. Okay. Um, I was I was saying that how I also added a def hover, but yeah, I don't know if I need a def hover because hover would only be changing the color, and that is taken care of in button color or in here. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Self dot click. So you put a call to self dot hold here. Um, cool. Uh, also, should I move this I... into color before I? Sorry, go on. I'm thinking we have enough stuff here that we might want to separate this out into. Uh. A state variable, and the state is one of pressed hover released and clicked and the opposite of hmm. I don't know mouse the mouse and the button interaction is is kind of complicated <laughs> Um, anyway, yeah, so we could separate this out into a separate function, but not right now. I don't think uh, we should probably just do the commit of the clicking and uh, holding first. And we can worry about that thing that I was just talking about later. Strip trailing white space. Good idea. Uh, and then... Let's see. So I'll do my version of a commit. Unstage changes. Oh. Oh, right. I didn't start that thing that I do. Do you think, um, we, need, do you think we should do separate uh, commits, or can I just say in a big thing, uh, register a click um so you have a lot of code there hard to say what did you so, so you change that line uh run and then is it all added. related to the clicking versus the not clicking it looks yeah, like it is I mean, this is mouse on screen yeah which is which was in process before. Yeah, like ideally that would have been a commit by itself, but now it's it's uh hard to extract. Um and then that seems related to the click. Um this is the click. The pressing is necessary for determining whether there was a click or when the click happens. Um yeah, so that so far, all of that looks like it's related to click and hold. So I would put that all as a single commit, given that it's hard to separate out that one thing. Um, and then, uh, let's see, do I have, yeah, okay. So I'll, for me, I do tagging specific commits with uh, wait, tag, tag name, oh, that's weird, why would it suggest the branch name for the tag name, um, yeah, so this is, uh, I will call this, uh, button, button click, uh, 
what would be the imperative way of saying this? Do button click action uh, exactly once or no? We separate button click and hold yeah and I'll put that on master get error it's not a valid tag name oh right uh that on master and that seems good okay cool okay um so let's see what do you want to do now I mean, time um, is pretty much up sorry what'd you say time is pretty much up yeah uh so we made a commit let's see right logic so we did that Review logic determining whether the button was just clicked. Uh, buttons for going left, right, up, and down. Yeah, so here, Basically, I guess. Add real function. Uh, add real functions for when a click. Do. Yeah. Uh, or I guess it says make buttons that. exchange ball in some way. So that is what we are trying Figure to do. out how to commit Kate from button to ball. Uh, communicate click from button to ball. Yeah. Uh, do you have any more thoughts on that? Um, you also said something about states. I would... Yeah. Um, so put that as we do that now um the i don't know maybe i'll do something down here so we can do um separate out logic for uh, setting button state. Uh, I forget what the different states are, but uh, what all of them are, but some of them are like hover, click, pressed, uh, released, yeah, I'll just. So we could just have a text variable that we set to one of these values. Um, Etc. Uh, yeah. So that's that's something that we could do. All right. Um, Anything else to add, or we good to go there? I think we're good to go. Okay. All right, see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome.